Check this out. Man, oh man, doesn't life just get you down? Taxes and taxes and the taxes. Can't forget about those taxes, though. I don't know about you, but when I'm feeling down, I love to see cartoon characters be all happy to cheer me up a little. Just watching their happiness can brighten up anyone's day. I love weddings! I love flowers! I love love! So I thought I'd count down my top 10 favorite of the most blissful cartoon characters I can think of. No anime characters here, just cartoons. I haven't seen any episodes of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic yet either, so Pinkie Pie isn't on the list. So let's have a look at the characters that never fail to make me smile. Pops is kind of weird. Uh, uh. <laughs> Regular show's cast of characters is definitely one of my favourites. They all interact in often hilarious ways. One of these characters just had to make it onto the list, that being the overly excitable old man Pops. You'd expect the son of the man who owns the park in regular show to be a snooty snob if he's anything like his father, Mr. Maillard. But nope, Pops is just a big-headed bundle of happiness. Good show! Jolly good show! No, literally. His head is huge. He's actually not human as far as I know. He's some sort of lollipop man. At least that's what it says in his debut, The Naive Man from Lollipop Land, a short film regular show creator J.G. Quintel made long before the release of the show. It's on YouTube. I recommend checking it out. I'd love to see an origin story for Pops one day, if there isn't one already. It could explain what Lollipop Land was like, and how his car flies, and all that craziness. Pops is also a proper gentleman. Just look at that distinguished moustache. Nya, nya, nya. Oh, <laughs> well, good day, young man. Ignorance is bliss, they say. While there are a few more characters like this later on the list, one of the first tunes that came to mind when thinking of this saying was Ed from Ed, Ed, Nettie. The one with one D in his name, that is. <laughs> Boy, you could put these three jokers into any situation and it would probably be hilarious. The funniest of the bunch has to be Ed, though. He's incredibly stupid, and that works well in contrast with the other Eds, and the general insane style of the show. There's something oddly likeable about a character so blissfully unaware of... well, everything. Ed just does whatever slapstick thing he wants. He also has an inhuman strength for no apparent reason. Canadians are weird! It would be scary to imagine what someone could do with this kind of power. Good thing Ed has it. Each of the Eds can be summed up with a running animation. A nice detail if you ask me. Ed flails the entire top half of his body behind him and charges forward. What's not to love? I got it! I haven't had a high five in months, but with this jacket, I just got three in a row. Leader of the trio of bear bros from We Bear Bears, Grizz the Grizzly Bear is a very confident one. He's a born leader, always encouraging his brothers Panda and Ice Bear, trying to make new friends and helping out whomever he can, like the friendly bear he is. He does, however, have a dependent side to him, which is explained in a really adorable way in the episode Burrito. Chris reminds me of myself in a way. He has to relax in just the right way. Getting nice and comfortable, get that breeze flowing, have some nice food by your side, and then I can watch my cartoons. Pathetic. We'd so be bros if he were real and not an animal that could easily rip me to shreds in a few moments. Yeah, besties for life. Yes, I would eat that. With the show is usually darkest over the garden wall, you're definitely going to need some comic relief to balance everything out. There are a lot of crazy characters in this mini-series, but I think we can all agree the younger of the two lost brothers, Greg, is the best in this attribute. Ain't that just the way? Greg sure is a spontaneous little guy, often making light of dark situations with little games or naming random animals, like a possum now named Jeffrey, and his pet frog whom changes names seemingly every episode. I feel like Greg is a character for the younger viewers to latch on to, but can still definitely be entertaining to everyone. He may be the comic relief of the series, and can seem like a hindrance sometimes, but it's his simple way of thinking that often gets him and his older brother Wurt out of sticky situations. Adelaide! Come on and join the Adelaide parade! No. Greg's also darn good at improvising songs. He came up with the song Potatoes and Molasses on the spot. Potatoes and molasses. If you can't see them, put on your glasses. I feel sorry for this guy. I guess you could call Uncle Grandpa irresponsible and reckless, but he is a very happy-go-lucky character, with just a smidge of craziness. Heck, Uncle Grandpa's job is to help kids all around the world with their problems and make them happy. Being blissful is literally his job. 
I'm a cool guy! I like sour cream on my blueberry pie! His design may seem a little bit creepy at first, but I personally just find it funny. I do have to admit though, the amount of power he has in his world is a bit terrifying. This placement is mainly concerning the show itself though, using Uncle Grandpa as a representation of sorts. It's just trying to make people laugh in a fairly innocent way. Even though it gets heaps of negative feedback for being dumb, it still tries its best to entertain. It is a shame the show recently got cancelled. If Uncle Grandpa was released in the 90s, much less people would have a problem with it being so strange. This tangy yellow beverage is truly delightful. That's mustard. Is there more? Each member of the Teen Titans represent different superhero tropes in a very unique way, by combining them with teenage character types. Starfire is the preppy, innocent one of the group. Well, uh, most of the time, anyway. She comes from a planet called Tamaran, which is where she gets the power to shoot energy blasts and fly from. Being the only one from another planet, this was the perfect opportunity to make her the awkward kind of teenager. One that tries to fit in with others and understand their customs, a foreigner on a much bigger scale. Something quirky about Starfire is her unique speech pattern. It's strange, sure, but it never becomes gimmicky or irritating. We might journey to the mall of shopping, or perform braiding maneuvers upon each other's hair, or... If you've ever felt like the odd one out of the group, that's what Starfire's like. But she always adds a touch of fun to the Titans' adventures. You never knew wearing a cape was so much fun! Okay, on to Steven Uni- What's that? I've only talked about Cartoon Network shows so far. Oh, dang it, uh, uh. <gasps> oh my gosh! Flying Princess Pony Hat! See, I watch things other than Cartoon Network shows. <laughs> but you know what else this list needs? An ultimate super hyper team. Yeah! Star Butterfly is a hyperactive princess from another dimension who was sent to Earth because she's too impulsive and crazy and something along those lines. Triangle. She's happy, like, all the time. Mostly in a naive sort of way, though, and not faced by all the craziness that follows her. She finds Earth culture fascinating, like drinking fountains and light switches. And you said there was no magic on Earth? Star has a very can-do attitude, which I guess wouldn't be hard with her super OP magical wand. I think the credits song describes her best, but yeah. Hardcore cuteness and rainbows and ah! Can we, uh, go back to, uh, Cartier Network now? Okay, yes! Just in case you haven't seen the show spammed all over the internet yet, Steven Universe is an amazing show with amazing characters, like Peridot. But let's talk about the main character of the show, Steven himself. Just look in. He's basically a superhero in training, trying his best to be like his guardians, the Crystal Gems. What's cool about their relationship is that Steven learns a lot from the Crystal Gems in terms of maturing and combat. But the Crystal Gems also learn a lot from Steven too, but with his innocence and anti-violence attitude. He is a true hero, but he is still just a kid at the same time, and the writers don't forget that. Maturity doesn't just happen like that, you have to go through loads on the way, and it's great that we get to see him slowly mature throughout the show. I guess I'm just too tough to cry. Just today you were crying about snakes. They don't have any arms. He's easy to empathize with because of his sweet joyous nature. Steven just wants to prove himself as a hero, but just by being his fun-loving self, he already is one and inspires all those around him, as cheesy as that sounds. Have a great weekend! Haha, <laughs> nacho earrings! I'm hilarious! What is it about Mabel Pines from Gravity Falls that makes her just so likeable? The concept of her character does sound kind of lame and done before. A boy crazy, pop music loving, I'm talking rainbows, I'm talking puppies kind of gal. But it's not important how many times a concept has been done before, it's how well the creators actually write them. And they did an extraordinary job on making Mabel. Help! We are on fire! Every detail about her is done so well to such a point that it makes it hard not to love her. It also helps that she's voiced by Kristen Skoll who has a naturally giddy and whimsical voice for all her characters. Mabel is a bit like those Oni-chan little sister types from anime, but like, not annoying. It is nice to see a brother-sister dynamic like Dipper and Mabel's, where they actually get along pretty well and consider each other friends. Awkward sibling hug? Awkward sibling hug. She's almost like a slightly older female version of Greg, although she came first, so I suppose she started the trend with these types of hyper comic relief characters. Just goes to show you what a great character Mabel Pines really is. Um, you're just a big old dummy dumb. On screen now are some honorable mentions. 
I couldn't quite fit them on this list, but I still find them all really entertaining. Let me know who your favourites are below. F is for friends who do stuff together. U is for you and me. Tom Kenny, you sly dog making your way to number one again. Call me predictable, but I just love SpongeBob SquarePants as a show and a character. He's just so iconic and timeless. All SpongeBob wants to do is make the most out of life and spread as much joy to everyone as possible. A lot of people say he's irritating, but to me, I just can't not like him. Plus, he's yellow, the happiest of all colors. Now it's time to bring it around town. Bring it around town. SpongeBob perceives the world through childlike eyes and always tries to see things in a positive way. He may be super dorky, but I always find myself rooting for him. He and his friend Sandy Cheeks would be a sweet couple, but I'm sure Spongebob barely even knows what a relationship is. Bless him. For these reasons, Season 1 is my favourite of the show, as it's more character-based, rather than just comedy-based. Don't get me wrong, I still love the comedic side of Punch. I just prefer the sweet character moments from the first season. Get what, Squidward? Me and Spongebob are friends again! Spongebob teaches us that there's no need to be ashamed of our childlike side. It just makes life a little bit more fun. And is for anywhere and anytime at all! Down here in the deep blue sea! Thanks a bunch for watching guys, stick around for more cartoon videos, bye!